Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 56. What are you waiting for? Sitting in the carpool lane way too early. (laughs) You know, those days that you're like, you have so much time to kill, but for some reason you're just super efficient and everything's done. And then you're like, oh, I got a lot of time on my hands right now. (laughs) And on the days that you really need to be efficient because you don't have enough time and you just flounder around and screw everything up and, you know, run out of time. What's that about? So I am sitting in my car. When you hear traffic noise go by, if you do, just pretend it's ocean waves. That's what I'm doing. Swish. Oh, it's an ocean wave. It's not all this horrible traffic. (laughs) Okay. Quick business. I know I usually put this at the end, but really quick. I want to tell you about Hearth and Home um, because I want you to get in on this because it's so much fun and it becomes like this oasis during the holiday season where you can come and receive comfort and be uplifted and relax and de-stress and... There's going to be special presentations in there. If you sign up and you have something you want to offer to the people in the group, you're welcome to do that. Check with me first. But most things are going to be okay. Um, And that starts November 22nd. So that's why I want to throw it right up here in the front. Just go to the website, thatmichellewolf.com forward slash hearth, H-E-A. R T H. I forgot how to spell hearth there for a second, but the, the energy in there is that hearth energy being at home, sitting in front of the fireplace, totally relaxed, no pressure, just beauty, beauty, comfort, ease, grace. That's the energy that builds that group. And this is our third year of doing it. There's people coming back from two years before. And we are just all invested in creating this sacred, peaceful container. And it's held steady until January 1st. So it gets you all the way through. So please, please come and join us. It's only 111 bucks for the whole, it's 40 days. And there is a drop down menu when you go to that page at the very bottom, you can upgrade and get a clarity session added to that for less than 50% off. So, or more than 50% off. You save a chunk. Let's put it that way. Numbers are not my thing. That's why I'm not a um, mathematician. Anyway, go check it out. Please come along with us. It's so much fun. All right, now then, actually, yeah, what are you waiting for on that, too? Get in there, sign up, come on now. (laughs) We're going to have such a good time. Um, Part of that group, too, is to get you to deliberately, intentionally say, once a day, I deserve some beauty and some peace and some ease and some calm and some cozy fireplace energy. All right, So that's part of it too. You're training yourself for 40 days to create, carve out some sacred space for yourself. All right. What are you waiting for? What you waiting for, honey bunnies? When you start meditating regularly and you really, really commit to it and you're doing 20 minutes a day or so for extended periods of time, um, extended days and cumulative days, It has a cumulative effect that you start to notice things that you never noticed before. When you go along doing that, it can feel like your life is immediately in the shitter because all of a sudden you're aware of all the crap you put up with all the time and it can feel pretty bad. And sometimes it will make people stop meditating, which is a real tragedy because they're on the cusp of really awakening. When you meditate regularly and you start to get some distance between the you you think you are and the you you really are, and you start to witness and become aware of and see what's actually going on in your life that you've been blind to, it's transformative, but it can be a little bit bumpy in the beginning. 
Then when you get through that and you extend your time, and not everybody needs to or wants to do hour-long meditating. You might not need to do that, but some of you are going to feel drawn to extending your time. And what happens is, is you really become aware of the compulsion, the habitual compulsion to escape the present moment. New meditators tell me all the time, and when I started meditating, thank goodness we didn't have cell phones because I didn't have to deal with this. Um, But they're always wanting to reach. They feel their hand wanting to, the impulse to reach for the phone, reach for the phone. I tell people all the time, set the time, set the timer on your cell phone if that's what you're using to keep track of your meditation time and then put that phone across the room or in a drawer or somewhere where you'll still hear it, but you can really see how often your hand is like, Oh, I wonder what's happened on Facebook in the last 45 seconds. Or let me refresh my Twitter feed and see what's next crazy thing has happened. (laughs) Right. We don't need to do that. We can take a 15 minute break. The consistency matters, the carving out that time matters, the making your time and t- t- that you spend towards your awakening process of life so sacred that you don't care what's going on, you won't miss your meditation time. It, it, there's a, a switch that flips. When you do it long enough and you get through the bumpiness and you start to really hear yourself and you start to reconnect with your body and start to go home to your body, you start to then switch from craving social media stimulation to craving the uh, the mental chemicals that are produced in meditation. You start to, you can switch from being addicted to your Twitter feed or your Instagram dopamine hit over to the peaceful, calm, I think it's oxytocin, whatever chemicals are that are produced when you just sit with yourself in silence. It starts to become so satisfying that you will naturally start to make it a priority. So doing these longer meditations now for several months, an hour, two hours, sometimes, sometimes longer, um, has really brought crystal clear into my awareness. And I hope that you all are seeing this to some degree of how often I'm waiting for something so that I can do something. I'm waiting for X to happen so that Y can happen so that then Z can happen. I'm still really thinking in these linear terms of, well, when I have a full business or when I move somewhere that has a place to walk or when I have an office space where I can, you know, set everything up and leave it out and a cat free zone. (laughs) Yeah, right. (laughs) Rightio. Beautiful dreamer. Dreaming of a cat free space. That's never going to happen. Well, not for another decade. Anyway, my cats are all still pretty young. But you know what I mean? Like, well, I'm going to not do this because of that. I'm going to put off this, these baking projects because my kit, my oven is broken. I need a new oven and I can still use it, but it heats up the house. And, you know, these little tiny things we tell ourselves, I can't because keep coming back to that phrase. I hear it all around me. I hear them. I can't because I can't, uh, the, this baking thing that I, I want to do and want to do some, um, vegan cookies, gluten-free cookies, things like that for the holidays and really dive into baking because I do love it. And I want to see how that goes over the winter. I might want to do some human design slash cookie sales at farmer's markets next year. I don't know, but even that, I realized that I've wanted to bake for a long time more, but I've been putting it off because of the oven and I don't have any counter space. Okay. So those are the, I would have the impulse to bake and then I would dismiss it. Yeah, but the oven, it's summer. We don't have, I don't have blah, blah, blah. 
I've been wanting to bake I for months and I've been dismissing it and I didn't even catch it until recently. When you're doing human design and you're doing meditation and if you're connected to me on Patreon, you're also getting the daily one command for wealth process it's every single day, a 10 minute or so of meditation. You really start to feel those impulses. And then the next step is really catching how you're dismissing them. The body is saying, go bake. Go bake vegan cookies. Because for some reason, my body is like rejecting all animal products, which is a little annoying, but whatever. Following that intuitive eating, following that intuitive impulse to hey, I should call so-and-so, or hey, I should bake some cookies, or hey, I should, mastering macarons might be fun, or hey, I should write my book that I've been talking about for 20 years, or whatever your project is, or hey, I should go, I should go do a little painting today. I should reach out to a couple of people I think would I think would make good clients you know these little little impulses and we're like yeah but what are we waiting for are we waiting for permission are we waiting till we can do stuff that no one will we don't have to worry about being disapproved by I read a study this just nearly broke my heart I read a study that for a lot of people, they don't come into their own until their parents die. They're so invested, even in their 50s, 60s, that 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever, that they don't leave their job and launch into their heart's desire because they're afraid that their parents are going to disapprove. And that some people are still functioning that way, even though both their parents are deceased. They just have transferred it over to siblings or um, peer groups, their colleagues. What are their colleagues going to say? But a lot of this, this article, I wish I could remember where I read it, but it was really saying that, you know, sometimes people just blossom when their parents die. <laughs> That's sad. I don't think our parents want that for us. I think they want us to blossom now. <laughs> I mean, maybe there's some shit parents, you know, we know there are some shitty parents out there that don't want you to be successful, but you know what a shame that is. Whatever you're waiting for, I guarantee you, I can find a way for you to do at least some of it today. You might not be able to do the whole thing, but ask yourself what you're waiting for. So I, um, I want to create a jewelry business or I want to, uh, I want to, uh, start a blog, but I, I can't because listen to yourself for a few days. What is today? Tuesday. I'm going to load this up today. So where, when it, let's, let's do it this way. Cause I know not everybody listens on the same day that I release it because I'm inconsistent on the day that I release it. My apologies. <laughs> I'm apologizing for my consistently inconsistently in this. But whenever you're listening to this, if you want to take this challenge, here's my, here's my challenge to you. My gentle, loving, with much affection challenge to you. Listen for how many impulses you have during the day that you are an automatic no to. I should take a walk. No, it's raining. Like you can't find an umbrella or a raincoat. And I, you know, that old saying like, you ain't made of sugar. You ain't going to dissolve if you take a walk in the rain. I should write today. Yeah, but my computer's so slow. Uh, Pen, paper, anyone? How many book ideas? How many song ideas? How many amazing business ideas got their start written on the back of a napkin? at some restaurant or some place where somebody was out and had an idea, grabbed the first thing that they could write on. There's no reason that you can't write today. There's no reason that you can't paint today. Uh, There are people that paint with their fucking feet. 
there's elephants that paint. Are you going to tell me? <laughs> Are you going to tell me an elephant can paint and you can't find five minutes to slap some paint on something? <laughs> you don't have to paint with your feet. I'm guessing if you do have to paint with your feet, I want your website because <laughs> I am highly impressed by that. That's amazing to me that people who have such a drive to create that they don't let anything get in their way. If they can't paint with their hands, then they paint with their feet. If they can't paint with their feet, then they paint with their mouth. There's people who do that. If they can't write, they write with their eyeballs. There's computer programs that allow people to type with their eye movements. So really, I could have titled this, We Have No Excuse. <laughs> we have no excuse for not doing what we say we want to do. Okay, we hear this a lot, right, when we're dealing with food issues. I can't not eat the Ben and Jerry's. I just, I just don't know what happens. I'm just in the store and it's on sale and I'm like, ew, I love you, Cherry Garcia. Come home with me. Sit here in the, in the, in the, in my basket, in my buggy. We have a thing with my daughter, whether it's a buggy or a cart. What do you say? Is it a shopping buggy or a shopping cart? It's a buggy. I don't care what you call it. It's a buggy. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, well, I can't get through. I can't intermittent fast because blah, blah, blah. I can't. I can't, I, this one happens a lot. And this one makes me crazy. Oh, I could never give up sugar. When I spent my five years sugar free a long time ago, like a decade ago, um, I heard that, oh my, I could never give up sugar. Really? Really, Janet? Because I think you really are the one that puts the stuff in your mouth. So you actually really can give up sugar. We're handing our power away all day. Now, you guys have heard me talk about micro decisions. We micro decide our way through the day. Are we going to own our power or not? I can't. I could never give up sugar. Could you let your toddler run out in the street? No, of course not. Come on now. You wouldn't let your toddler run out in the street. You wouldn't let your dog play on a busy road. Unleashed. Well, there are people around here down south that do that. But, you know, generally speaking, you're not going to let Muffy play on the sidewalk without a leash on her if you care. Right? But you say you can't do this or that. I can't. Right. I can't find time to paint. I can't because. But there are lots and lots of um, things that you would consider non-negotiable that you will make time for you will do them do you feel the difference when you think about that I can't commit to a meditation practice I can't because I, I if I come over and sit on your lap you will you will stay put <laughs> so you actually can stay put so it's not about beating up on yourself and calling yourself a bunch of names it's about being honest with yourself honesty will often shift resistance and procrastination like nothing else because you have to own it it's not i can't give up sugar it's i i could never give up sugar it's you would never give up sugar because it would mean that you'd have to do some things differently. It would mean having to say no to Grandma Edna who cooked sweet potato pie for Thanksgiving and it's going to have hurt feelings if you don't eat it. But you can, you know, I mean, you know, like being honest with ourselves is incredibly important. Who's the guy? Is it Brad Blanton? Radical Honesty. Go read that book if you're a book reader. Radical honesty. It's getting so honest with yourself that you don't let yourself get away with anything. It's okay. It's better and healthier for you to say, I'm not going to walk, even though my body is asking for it, even though I know it would help me get off my blood pressure, prep, my boop, 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 my, my blood pressure medication. 
It's three words, Michelle. It's not that hard. Blood pressure medication. I'm not going to walk. I'm not going to pay attention to what's going in my mouth. I'm not going to write today. I'm not going to take action toward my dreams today. It is much healthier for you to just own it, name it, claim it, say it, be a grown up about it. That is so much healthier for you. Because when we pretend that we don't know, when we pretend to be confused as a coping skill, when we pretend that things are just too complicated so we can possibly figure it out, that creates a division in your energy because you have one part maintaining a lie, lots and lots of bucket o lies. It, you know, you have that part of you that's like, okay, I got to generate a lie. I got to make sure I don't wake up to it so that I can keep my story in place so that I can stay small and not do my dream stuff and not have any fun and not piss off Grandma Edna. That takes an enormous amount of energy to tell yourself lies. And I believe I could be wrong, but I believe there's a research study out there about this topic, about how much division and energy it takes to lie to ourselves. I'll actually, I'm curious now, so I'll actually take a look around and see if I can find that. But you can see, like, it makes sense, right? If you got to tell your, if you tell a lie to a person, you t it takes a lot of energy to make sure you don't get caught. Hopefully you're not doing that. Hopefully you are past being seven <laughs> and feeling like you need to tell lies. But you know what I mean? Like it takes a lot of energy. You have to compartmentalize your energy. Well, you can't compartmentalize your energy if you say you want to live an authentic life. Because living an authentic life requires you be whole. Requires you to do enough of this work and get through enough of these things to hold the both and in your system to hold the yes I'm a bitch on one side and I'm a mother Teresa on the other side and I'm in I'm holding both of those I'm not standing on one side or the other I'm allowing both mother Teresa and you know street fighter bitch to exist all in the same space not requiring them to be friends, not requiring them to be separate. It's a third place where you're, you're there and you're both and you're okay with both. And so they don't have to be anything different. So if you catch yourself telling yourself a lot of lies, you can love that part of you that's been working its ass off to maintain this system of falsehoods for you so that you don't have to be scared. See how sweet that is? What a sweet little, what sweet little liars we are. <laughs> what sweet little intentions we have. We just want to feel safe and comfy and cozy. And, you know, with a fresh pint of Ben and Jerry's. Just want that to all be good. But it's not. And it's important to be honest about that. I can't start a Facebook page. I can't get my Instagram going. I can't uh, write an article a week or a, a blog post a week because, 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 because we're making up a bunch of shit. Do, 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 do. We needed to stop that off. Stop it. Stop it. Here's the thing. On a big picture scale, the world is desperate for you to be expressing your gifts in the world, whether or not anyone ever knows it, whether you ever monetize it, whether you ever are running a business with it, the people in the world need more love, more joy, more comfort. This is behind my impulse to bake. When I really meditated with it, I was like, we need the joy. I need the, the joy of creating through baking. I love it. I love to cook. And my kitchen is ridiculous. So I'm going to have to make some adjustments in order to do some stuff. But the world and, and the world needs you expressing that because you 
are one aspect of one fractal, let's say it that way. You are a fractal that has the capability of radiating a light into the world that only you can radiate. I can't radiate your light. Nobody can. Nobody can. Nobody can radiate a light in the world like you. You are the only one that can give to the collective energy, to your family, to your people that you run across, people that you pass on the street. You're the only one that can give what you're here to give. And the world desperately needs you in your whole authentic self, in the part of you that's a street fighting bitch, in the part of you that would put Mother Teresa to shame, you're so damn saintly. We need you. The world is going through upheaval. Have you noticed? Don't get caught in the upheaval. Don't get caught in the, I can't because, I can't express my light because I'm not worthy or nobody sees me anyway or I don't get the external reward for doing it. I don't make money doing it. I don't get kudos or whatever. Whatever. What are you waiting for? If you're waiting for someone to notice you, you're going to be waiting a long time, especially if you're a projector or a manifester or a manifesting generator. If you're piping in and you're not in alignment, piping up with your ideas and your advertising and marketing, and you're not in alignment, no one will hear you. Doesn't matter. Keep doing it because you'll get into the flow. You'll clunk around and make mistakes and uh, look stupid and whatever and waste a lot of money probably. And that's okay because in the process, you'll find, you'll slipstream right into it. You'll keep trying, keep asking questions, you'll naturally trip and fall into it often enough that you'll go, hey, when I was doing that thing, I did, people were able to hear me. I wasn't invisible. Huh. Let me do some more of that. Let me play some more and explore cookbooks some more and then sit on my butt having fun and receive two invitations. One to a podcast, one to do a training in somebody's Facebook group, completely out of the blue. Your invitations to engage with the world will increase when you are not lying to yourself, when you're not waiting for X to happen so that you can go do Y, Z, when you're doing it imperfectly, but you're doing it, tripping and falling, and you're standing up and you're still doing it, whatever that it is. Because when you do that, when you don't lie to yourself, when you pursue what you want to pursue in the most tiny way, you're taking your power back and you're saying, I'm not going to let a malfunctioning stove stop me from expressing the joy I get out of baking anymore. I'm not doing that. I can set up a table for counter space. It's winter now. So I can cook and the oven heat can escape all over the place (laughs) and that cuts down on the propane heater bill. So whatever. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I can't write because the kids are here. You can write. You might be writing a paragraph at a time or you might have to train yourself to use voice dictation so that you can do it in the car similar to someone who does their podcast in the car more often than not because this is when it works for me right let my lack of professionalism let my rough cut way that I offer things out in the world inspire you I'm all for professionalism if I When I, let's say it that way, when I can afford to have a podcast engineer go over my episodes and make them super fancy, I totally will. I love the sound of a highly polished uh, podcast for sure, but it doesn't work right now. And I do better when I share with you 
at least once a week, something that's coming through. It works for me to do it in the car. So that's what I do. You can write on the back of grocery store receipts. You can write on the paper bag that you bought a pretzel in. You can write. You can paint. You can keep paint in five different areas of the house. And while you're waiting for the pasta to boil, you can be painting. We get to, we wait. We wait for perfect circumstances. We wait for permission. We wait for promises that if I do this, then I'll get that. If I start my blog, then I'll get an audience and then I'll sell them the other cool things that I want to do. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and then you're dead and you didn't ever do it. Let's not, let's not go that way. Okay. Stop waiting. What can you do? Seriously, I'm not even kidding. What can you do right now today, no matter how small it is, that will bring you joy that your body has been asking for? I want to take a walk. Oh, it's raining. Get a, put a paper bag over your head. Get a magazine. I want to walk, but there's bears. That's been mine. I want to take a walk, but man, there's a lot of bears out. (laughs) There's a lot of bear activity. Well, I can walk with a shotgun. I can walk with bear spray. I don't use bear spray because here's what will happen. If something dramatic happens and I have to defend myself, I'm going to end up spraying myself. And I'm just going to be an easier to catch snack (laughs) for the bear. (laughs) Bears don't eat people unless they're really ill. But whatever. Anyway, that's the excuse. Oh, there's so many bears. And that's true. There, There has been a lot of bear activity this year. And they really aren't too scared of me. (laughs) I yelled at one on the porch and it really just ran about 200 yards away and turned around and was like, yeah, whatever, lady. I'm just going to hang out here for the afternoon. Or it's raining or whatever. You know, there's ways. I can walk laps. Our property's big enough that I could walk laps in eyesight of the house. My body just wants to walk. It doesn't care what kind of shoes I'm wearing or it doesn't care if there's bears and it doesn't care if the grass is wet. You know, these are all things that our mind throws up. It's like, no, don't walk. Ew. Ew. Don't paint. Ew. Think of the mess and then you'll, you'll get started and you'll only get and then you'll get interrupted and yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. <sighs> Can we stop waiting and if we can't stop waiting can we as an interim step stop lying to ourselves about why we're not doing the things that we really want to do why we are discounting and ignoring the impulses that your body gives you all day long to do things that won't make sense on paper but will lead you straight to your dreams in a very circuitous, wandery, weirdo kind of way. But if you keep walking, no kidding, one step in front of the other, one tiny step, one micro decision to take your power back through honesty, one micro decision to own your power by not by caring more about what your impulse is saying than you care about what Grandma Edna is going to think if you don't eat the sweet potato pie. Honesty as an interim step if you can't take action yet. Because honesty will show you the stories that you're telling yourself. And then super radical, consistent honesty with yourself will show you what you're really avoiding. And then, like I always say, and then... You grab yourself by the scruff of the neck and you get in there and you start baking or you start walking or you start paying attention to your food and just being active uh, one step at a time, right? This is a a, a little bit of a ridiculous example, but I just want to show you like yesterday 
So this impulse to bake has been with me much longer than I was consciously aware of because I was not paying attention. So uh, then I decided, um, well, there was this cookie course, this vegan baking course that I wanted, and I thought it was $55, which is kind of high, you know, for a, a video series, whatever. But I really like the woman's, and I appreciate the work that, because certainly I know that I want to be paid what I'm worth and all the time that goes into those, even when they're videos. So, but I kept hesitating over the button. I just didn't push the button and it's the money was there. And also it's not there yet. Like I'm still running at a, in the red. And so I was like, man, I don't know. You know, I could Google it. I could, you know, whatever, but it, the course looked really interesting, but I didn't do it. So then I went shopping and while I was shopping, I sold this product that, that's been listed in a, for sale for a long time. Actually, I thought it was never going to sell. And it was, it sold for $60 minus the price of mailing it. I'm right at the $55. So I think, well, I'm going to go home then. I'm going to sign up for that course. Well, then I go home, go to my email, click on the link the price changed to $72. And for some reason, $72 was like unacceptable. Well, what? Oh my God. No, $55 is like, oh, that was pushing it. $72? No, I don't think so. So then I went looking at YouTube videos. And then I went looking here and looking there. And just staying with the little soft feeling of, when you settle down and ask, when I settled down and ask, well, did I even really need that cookie package? And my body was like, no, that's not fun. That's not fun to get a 13 recipes from somebody else. My body wanted to explore. I looked at like 50 different websites. I explored all these different cookbooks. I watched all these little Instagram videos and some YouTube videos. And tell, let me tell you, I'm going to be mastering vegan macarons. Macarons, because they look amazing. Um, you know, like my body enjoyed the process of discovery. Too often we want to just go, well, I'll buy the thing and then I'll do the thing. And bada bing, I'm done. I'm a baker. <laughs> no, the meandering, circuitous contemplating holding things in your energy and slowing down one little step at a time one little step at a time my hand hesitated over the buy now button and I listened because I've been really practicing this a lot <laughs> the last few months especially the last few weeks if you listen to last week's podcast for crying out loud me and my body are really building a good solid partnership but you know like I hesitated and I was like okay what about this what about that let me look at this let me look at that looked at all the cookbooks found two that my body was like oh yeah I want to see that one ended up spending about $35 have two gorgeous gigantic actually cookbooks on the way oh I'm excited about that the anticipation of, ooh, a fresh cookbook. If you if you don't like to cook, then this will not make sense to you. It would be the same as me saying, ooh, a fresh pack of toilet paper. Yay. You know, no, but for if you like to cook, a fresh cookbook is like, you can run on the happiness of that for a while. So I've got one coming Wednesday, then I've got one coming Thursday. I'm so excited about it. All So how does this relate to following your dreams? It's you being active in in partnership with your body, following your human design, if you're into that, but at a basis, just following what is light and happy, what feels good to you, that, guess what that leads you to? Money, relationships, houses, if that's what you're looking for. These little tiny things that we discount are the tiny little steps that lead us to the big stuff. Making myself happy brought in two invitations. I know it 
it's exactly what I was told would happen when I started my, following my human design. And it is happening. My clients who take what they learn with me in human design and start applying it, they see the result. It works. And now I'm proving it to myself on a daily basis. But key point, when we discount those little impulses, we're saying no to the things that we say we want. No, I'm not going to take a walk, even though that would make your body happy, which would shift the energy you're radiating, which would make you magnetic, possibly into running into someone on your walk or moving enough energy that you could be a little more vibrant when you show up doing your posting or your marketing so that someone who wouldn't have seen you pre-walk can't help but see you post-walk. Discounting the little bitty baby baby bird steps, the little bitty breadcrumbs. We're missing the mark and then we're wondering why we can't build our business. We're wondering why we're so unhappy and we're wondering why we're teetering on the edge of or always in burnout mode because we're not listening. We're waiting. We're waiting for the big stuff. We're waiting for the structures that our minds say well this needs to happen so that that can happen and that can happen but our minds are idiots our minds don't know what they're talking about our minds are great at generating information data points concepts puzzles to solve but our body has the wisdom for what to do your body knows that baking a batch of cookies is going to shift everything. Your body knows that saying no to staying with a toxic person because there's a trip you want to take is going to lead you over to forming a relationship with someone else and getting even better than what you wanted because you were willing to trust your body saying no to this option and yes to this option, even though on paper, it may not make sense. So what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? And stop, what can you stop waiting for today? What can you commit to today? One tiny little thing. If you're a writer and you keep making excuses not to go in your office and write, then your computer needs to come live on the couch. And if people in the house complain, too bad. If you're a writer and you keep making excuses to not go in your office and write, then you need a little computer or an iPad or a Microsoft Pro or something small that you take with you and you write when you're sitting in the carpool lane or waiting for a meeting to start. You've got... 10 minutes usually we get ready we wait for webinars to start there's 10 minutes that we're listening to you know the music the pre-webinar music you whip out your thing and you write that sounded naughty you take out your writing instruments and you write something (laughs) be careful about whipping stuff out that can get you in trouble in some states it's illegal All right, I've been talking for a long time. Let me stop here. What are you waiting for? Ask that question. You might not get the answer right away, but stay with it and you'll start to see. If you haven't committed to a daily practice of meditating, please, 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 please do so and do it in silence. No mantras, no music. Listen. Listen. Please come join us in Hearth and Home. I can't even tell you how much I want to see you in there. Check out the website, thatmichellewolf.com forward slash hearth, H-E-A-R-T-H. Come and join us. It's so much fun. It's so much fun. All right. Think less, feel more. Talk to you later.